Now, with all of this, what can happen with our images is that they can fall apart. Let me show you what I mean by that. So before you get too excited about, oh my gosh, I can make my skies as deep and dark as possible, let me show you the catch. Um, and this is um, an iPhone photo of my daughter, Sophie, at our favorite beach in Santa Barbara. And in the fall, you get these minus low tides, and it's just beautiful. So we were just playing, and she held a surfboard. And so I'm like, yes, black and white, dark skies, you know, all the stuff I've just showed you, I'm about to show you, doesn't always work. <laughs> so I hit the V key, I say, oh, bummer, like, wh where'd all my, you know, and so I go like this, and then if we zoom in on this one, we see the sky just falls apart. And the reason is, I shot it with my iPhone, and there just isn't as much data or information there. So part of having, you know, working with uh, your capture is trying to make sure you have that when you know that, like if you know that you're going to need to do something with the sky, maybe you want to catch a couple exposures and you want to, you know, pull out your big camera versus your small camera to, to, to do that. Um, and I guess big and small isn't the right way to say it because small cameras now are amazing. I mean, I'm shooting a ton with these Sony cameras now and I love that and they're really small. But either way, the point being is the, the, the more content we can get, the more we can swing our sliders, right? Um, so with this one, what we may have to do is brighten it up. We can still do a little bit of work kind of on the image, but the way it was captured is going to, in a way, maybe limit or direct the type of image that we're able to create. And that's okay. You know, that's part of it. And sometimes what happens is you go to black and white, like with this image, and you say, you know what? It's not working. Like, is it working for you? Which one did you like better? Let's say one for color, two for black and white. Okay. Okay, some black, yeah, a little bit of both. Shift Command R resets the whole thing. For some reason, the color works better for me. The main problem with it, I think, is the logo on the surfboard, which we could remove with our spot healing brush, but that's for another course. But anyway, the point of that is just to, to get you to think about that and also to realize that if we are going to swing stuff pretty hard, like maybe with this image here, um, I don't even think the sky looks great in that image, but um, it needs a little more work. But if we're going to do that... Do not neglect to get into that area and in the develop module, do some of your detail work. And in the, uh, let's see if we can find something where we get a good edge, his feet. <laughs> um, with, with that, what I mean is, uh, I'm just gonna exaggerate for a second. You can, you can bring unwanted noise into an image because what you're doing is you're taking blue content and you're really pushing it hard one way or another. And whenever you push content hard, something can fall apart. So with that, the luminance noise reduction is going to become really important. And what's strange as well is the color noise, and I'll show that in my class later today, also comes into play. So what I'm trying to do is to connect the dots, right? So I'm saying, yes, basic panel, amazing. Don't forget about color temperature. Use your other sliders. Grayscale panel, amazing. Use those sliders. But then also let's tie it to our, the rest of our workflow, right? Because what happens to a lot of my students is they do this with the sky, and then the print looks horrible. And I say, oh, you forgot to luminance noise, you know, reduce your noise. And so again, just remember that. Keep that in mind as far as your overall workflow. All right, let's keep going. Um, let's do some skin tone stuff. Can I jump in? Yeah, jump in. A couple of questions for you. Yeah. Um, first of all, and let me know if you've got any questions in here. Grab a mic. Okay, so first question, this came yeah. back in the beginning. Sure. Do all these tips and tools work in Adobe Camera Raw that you're showing yes, us? Yes, great in, question. In Lightroom. Um, Let's, let's do something on the fly, see what happens here. Just give Lightroom a second, right click, show in Finder, and what I'm going to do with this Baja RAW file is um, open it up in Camera Raw. Um, in Camera Raw, there's some stuff, at least right now, that you can do that you can't do in Lightroom. You know, the camera engine is, is pretty well connected between the two. Um, and there's also some little things. But with, with this image, um, our V key isn't going to give us our victory. So, so we lose some of the shortcuts don't quite translate. Um, but there is ways to get through the tabs. Most people don't know that. Remember, it's command plus a number. So in, in camera raw, it's command option plus a number. So I'm just holding command option with the thumb and then tapping on my numbers. That shortcut may be an overkill, but if you're a high achiever or whatever it's called, you know, you know that's a good one. Um, and we can convert to grayscale like we've seen before. We can do stuff with our sliders. Um, some of the things that we can do um, as well here, though, is like with a gradient, just see something here. 
And let me exaggerate, give, cut me some slack, because I realize this doesn't look good, but it will be good for a point. So I really want to darken that sky and add contrast to that and clarity to those clouds um, and do all that. What's happening with this adjustment is it's hitting the truck, right? Because the truck's right at the horizon line. And that happens. Mountains, you know, you don't top your mountain, you don't want to have dark, but you want the. So anyway, there's a brush in here. Um, I'll use the minus brush. Settings, same kind of thing, feather, flow. And what I can do is subtract that adjustment, turn on auto mask, um, to, to save my, my vehicle or the mountaintop or whatever it is. So um, this is not totally answering the question, but what I'm trying to get at is both tools are powerful. And what I've found is my students, at least in the college level, always ask me, Chris, can I just use, learn Lightroom? And I say no, because camera is a filter in Photoshop. And I'll talk about that on an image later. Because sometimes you go color to Photoshop, you do all this work, and then you decide you want to convert to black and white, and you want to take advantage of what we've learned. You can't, you know, it's a good way to, to do that. Yeah. Awesome, and that's similar to another question that a number of people had voted on as well. Is it always recommended to do all the adjustments in black and white? Yeah. Or are there scenarios where we should make adjustment in color and then switch to black and white? Yeah, interesting question, and there's a lot of different theories kind of on that. Um, what I find is Camera Raw, it, you know, it, it's so flexible and all these kind of things and so much data there. So I try to do as much as I can Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom pre-Photoshop. Um, and if I know I'm going black and white, so, so yeah, I think so, but maybe someone out there is going to be like, no, you're wrong. But in my own workflow, yes, I think I do it. Um, because what, what I think what I have to do is, it's back to that thing, if I make the sky really weird, I'm going to introduce artifacts in that sky, and I want to take advantage of Lightroom's raw engine to deal with the noise. So I might as well do that there versus a, an iteration of that in Photoshop after I've done more to it, and I'm trying to access that via camera raw. That makes sense? So yes, I think so.